again. Uh, sometimes you say, turn your cup up and come expecting so God can fill you up. And he'll run it over sometimes into the saucer, won't he? Amen. I come expecting good things tonight. And I'm going to put my feet up under the Lord's table and just see what the Lord has for us tonight. No, we're going to be blessed tonight. Appreciate uh, Brother Mike and Sister Teresa. And they've been coming here to this church uh, several years and been working in the conference for several years. And, and uh, we just appreciate them ever so much. And not only them, I know Levi. And also, we got Greg with us tonight, Tingley. But we appreciate all of them tonight. So let's make them welcome here, Brother Mike Lanton. Yeah. Yeah.
We're worshiping the Lord. We like Brother David said, we've been coming a long time. Probably longer than some of y'all have, but uh, that's all right. We we make ourselves at home here. Appreciate it. Uh, I think uh, Tiffany, I seen her back there somewhere. I think she was about two when uh, we first came on the scene in this country, and uh, I think she's 12 now. And, and so, or she looks still looks 12, and uh, got a got a young. That makes you old right there. I mean, her mom and daddy is old. <laughs> grandparents. Ain't nothing like being a grandparent. Can I get an amen right there? Matter of fact, our oldest grandchild just turned 15 years old on Friday. And uh, her grandson turned 12 on the 11th of March. And uh, what they wanted for their birthday, uh, wanted us to take them and hear the inspirations and the primitive quartet and go city sing. I said, I'll take that right there. Yeah. Amen. They could have been wanting to go somewhere else and do some other thing, but they right. wanted to go hear that. We, so we took them. Matter of fact, my Selby says, I'm the greatest grandpa in the world. Not only did we take them to see them, but I arranged it that we had a late lunch with the inspirations. And she was just wowed by that. And I told her, I said, honey, they ain't near as popular as I am. So you don't have to it. <laughs> But she loved it, and we, we had a wonderful evening. And uh, thank God, it's good to be here tonight. And uh, it's good to see everybody. Uh, last year, Greg uh, wasn't with us. And he hadn't yet started with us. I think he started in August. Uh, or maybe he played some for us in some meetings before that. But uh, in August, he was... I asked him to play at our homecoming, our 40th anniversary, and uh, he did such a good job. I just asked him if he'd consider traveling some, and uh, he ain't missed a, missed a meeting. I don't reckon since, and we're glad to have him, Mr. Greg Tangler, and he lives in Mitchell. And, and of course, this uh, young man here, Superman, on our right, this young fella here, just turned 25 years old, just got engaged. He's getting married this year. Oh, yeah, got him a dandy. Uh, it was dog days, and she were blind and fell in love with Levi. And, uh, but we're happy for him, and uh, we're excited about that. And uh, he's a great talent, a great help to us. Let me let me tell you what kind of, I, I call him a kid, but he's a young man. I, but uh, anybody under 40 now is kids when you're 60, amen. And uh, last, I was telling preacher David, I said, this past Friday, we I had a real good friend. Uh, his wife passed away in Michigan, in Flat Rock, Michigan. And we were off this past week. We didn't have any appointments other than our home church. And uh, we we they called me and asked me if I'd come and conduct her funeral service in, up in Michigan, which was about three hours, three and a half hours from our home. And uh, so we were off this week. Didn't really see Levi all week. And. Uh, Teresa and him was talking on Thursday, I think it was, and uh, she told him something we were having to go up there, and he came and drove us and went with us and took us up there and sang with us. He didn't have to do that, but he did. That's what kind of young man he is, Mr. <laughs> Levi Nelson. I think he can hold the top in my lips right there. And then this young lady to my right, over 40 years now, we've stood and done this right here. Uh, we've had different ones help us through the years. But me and her have stuck it out together, and uh, for 40 over 40 years, I love her with all my heart. And fellas, I ain't done one thing. I'm not in the doghouse. I did not knock her out this afternoon, but uh, not on purpose. It was just one of those things, you know. And uh, the reason that happened, she follows me so close. Every time I stop, she runs me over. So uh, no, not that either. But uh, we do. Uh, Appreciate the goodness of the Lord. It's been a great journey uh, to serve Him. And then her name's Teresa Wynn Glenn. And my name, my mama would say, "This is I'm John Michael." So uh, y'all ain't got to call me that, but Mama could. And uh, so we appreciate being here. What we sing, Levi? Here for me. You're the worship of the Lord. John. Could be your last service. Could be mine. And I want to stand before him and say, Lord, I give it all I have. When the Savior spoke the great command and to witness in the wonder of his voice.
Well, thank the Lord. Bless you, Lord. How many is glad for that miracle? Amen. We sing a song sometimes called the greatest of all miracles. And that was when the Lord saved me. Uh, the greatest day in my life was the day I got saved. And uh, But there's a better day coming. Loon, <laughs> what's that preacher? The day I go to heaven. Could be by the what we call the grave by natural death or could be through the rapture. Some folks said, well, I don't believe in that. Well, just hang in there. You'll be all right. Uh, when the horn blows, we're leaving here. How many believes that? Amen. Somebody said, do you know all about it? I said, I certainly do not. <laughs> all I know is I'm on his side. I read the back of the book. We win, and that's good enough for me. He never called me and never asked my advice. When he made this world and created everything therein from nothing, I don't figure he's going to dial me up and ask me how to end it. Amen. But I do know what the Bible said. This earth shall perish with fire, but I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and there was no more sea. Amen. That's good enough for me. That's where I'm going. Matter of fact, I'm just as I'm some old fashioned, I can't, and so conservative, I can't even hardly look to the left when I preach. But bless God, I still believe in the King James Bible. I still preach the uh, old-fashioned style. I ain't, I, I'm too old to try to change. Uh, you know, they taught us in Bible school how to do it. Uh, taught us exactly how to preach. You know, they, they said you, when you come to the podium, the sacred desk, said you put your right hand on one side, your left hand on the other, and just begin to speak, never raise your voice, never move. Matter of fact, uh, if you get to feeling good, just kindly go to that way and maybe go to that way and put one foot half behind the other one and stand and preach. I said, that might work for some. <laughs> Ain't never worked much for me. I'm more calm than I've ever been because I don't want to face plant on the altar or the aisle or the pulpit. But now if it gets real good, I'm still liable to take a run. Amen? Amen. If I don't feel like running and I get to feeling good, I'll hire somebody to run for me. <laughs> Amen. That's all right, too. I've done that. My grandson, if he's with me, all i got to do is point at him when I get to feeling good, Tyron, and he'll take off. One fellow told me after church one night, he said, that's pitiful. Preacher said, you know that ain't necessary. You know you don't have to do that. I said, pitiful? I said, that's scripture. He said, Scripture? What Scripture are you going from? I said, the Bible said to train them up in the way that they should yeah. go, and when they get old, it won't part from them. That's right. I said, he may, he may go out into the world. I don't know about that. That'll be his choice. But there's one thing about it. He'll never forget running for his pap in the church service. Amen. And he's saved, and I'll just tell you what. I'll set you and him down here on this altar, and we'll have a Bible contest. And I'd say it won't be long till you'll figure out he's a pretty, pretty smart little feller. If you can get him to talk. He's kind of like me. Don't say much. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. I'm feeling good tonight. Thank you all for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Uh, I'm doing much better. I ain't 100%, but uh, I'm doing as good as I can with what I got to do with. And uh, But I'm feeling some better. Uh, and you, I, I, I would ask you this. I'm, I'm having trouble sleeping of a night. Um, I, I'm, I'm like a baby. I got my days and nights mixed up. Uh, last week, I've, I've probably not got in the bed before four in the morning. And there's, no, I mean, I, my conscience is clear. I, I, you know, usually if you got something on your conscience that ain't good, you won't be able to sleep. But it ain't that. I don't reckon nobody's mad at me. If they are, I don't know it. Well, there's probably some, but they won't tell me. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it ain't nothing like that. I just can't go to sleep. I, I get uh, about 9 o'clock, I think, well, uh, I'll, I'm going to take me something and uh, relax and, and just, uh, my doctor gave me just this little thing I, and she said, is that helping you? I said, Doc, I might as well eat an m, &M. Matter of fact, I, I, Teresa has some candy, you know, Weight Watchers. Y'all know what Weight Watchers is, don't you? And uh, got that thing on her phone, you know, tells you how much you eat and all that stuff. And, and uh, she had a bowl of candy there, and I, 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 I just get me some when I went by. And I weighed at the end of the week, and I'd gained two pounds. 
And come to find out, I turned that candy upside down. I thought it was Weight Watchers, WW, but I turned it over and it's M&M's. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so be careful on that stuff right there. Amen. All right, if you got your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. You heard about that pastor that went to the nursing home visited an elderly lady there and, and had prayer with her at the end and he was there about an hour and uh, he got up to leave and he said ma'am he said I'm going to go down here to the desk and I, I'm going to get by you some M&M's uh, and some peanuts and uh, so she, he, she said well okay he said, she said why are you doing that he said well I'll eat all your peanuts I'm going to go get you some more. She said, ah, don't worry about it. She said, I'd already licked the chocolate off of all of them. <laughs> Amen. Wouldn't that, ain't it good to be a preacher and a pastor? Amen. <laughs> well, that's as good as I've got tonight. So some of you finally smiled. Amen. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 26, verse 20. Three, verse. Well, let's do. Let's get verse twenty-two. Let me get that in there. Let me let me give you just a little bit of history before that. Uh, Isaac uh, has began to dig some wells. Redig, I should say, wells that Abraham, his father, had dug. But in the absence of Abraham, the Philistines had. They, the Bible said, stopped them up, filled them up. And Isaac is beginning to redig those wells, and he's at uh, one place, and he digs the well. But the herdsman comes, and they strive with his herdsman, and uh, they they uh, have a racket, is what you'd call that, and an argument, uh, and they say, "This is our wells, our water." So instead of, of being uh, what he could have been, Isaac just wanted to be like the Lord, and he just got up and moved on. Now we're going to pick up the verse reading in verse 22. said, And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Well, look at these next two words. Fear not. If you read your Bible through and you uh, happen to have counted, and maybe you didn't, but I've done that. And in this King James Bible, 365 times the words fear not appear. I don't think that's by chance or coincidence. What's that mean, preacher? Every day when you get up in this world, every year, you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> Fear not. Fear not, he said, for I am with thee and will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants digged a well. I want to share with you something tonight. Now, uh, there's many that says you shouldn't use analogies. You shouldn't use practical things to explain spiritual things. But uh, Christ was the best. At doing that. And when he did parables, he used things that they uh, might would realize and recognize uh, as he used parables and taught his people. Well, tonight I'd like to tell you about the process of digging a well. Just shortly after Teresa and I uh, was married, her father had worked his entire life uh, for Ashton Oil Incorporated in a little place called Martha, Kentucky. He started in Oil Springs and then they transferred him to Martha. That's where I met her. I was driving out Route 32. She jumped off the side of the hill in the middle of the road. I picked her up, took her home, and 40 years later, we're still together. Well, it didn't happen exactly like that, but close. 
So the matter of the fact was, shortly after we were married, her father, uh, my father-in-law, helped me to get a job in the production field with Ashland Oil. I never had a job such as good as that. But I can tell you the work was hard because when you hired in, the first thing you done, you got on a rig and you would go out and service wells in the fields. We had two types of wells. We had oil wells and then there was water wells. The water wells and all the oil wells were positioned in the right places for they had came in before they drilled the wells and done what they call core drilling to find the rock formation and all the stuff and where, how deep at what place they would need to drill. My dad run a core drilling rig all of his life. And uh, so I, I got a job and we had the water wells uh, and what they'd done, they were placed in strategic places uh, and we had a pump station and they would pump water into the ground, into the earth and that would force the oil toward the wells that had been drug, dug and then they would pump the oil out. Now there's a process, uh, back then they had those old uh, rotary type churned uh, drills, they just uh, took a big rod, a big steel a pole actually is what it would look like, had a tooth thing on the end of it and, and it would just go up and down and pound itself uh, into the earth uh, and, and the uh, foreman or the, or the rig operator would run that but there, we were laborers that helped keep everything going uh, and they would drill that to the place and then every now and then sometimes they would get just to the right place have you ever heard of a gusher well there was sometimes the wells when you hit the right place there was oil pocketed there and it was under great pressure that the oil would come up out of the ground on its own matter of fact you've seen the pictures or movies it would shoot over the rig beam and the stern there and everything and that's really that can happen Matter of fact, in Old Springs, Kentucky, several years ago, they dug, a, they dug a well, and it was that such. And that well flowed 100 barrels per minute on its own. That's a lot of oil. It was coming full force uh, out of the ground in that hole. They had barrel t tanks after tanks after tanks. Uh, and you know what it would do? It had such pressure. When it ran into the tanks, uh, the tanks would rumble. And the rumbling of the tanks uh, would even cause the earth to shake. Uh, can I tell you, I wish we'd get back to digging some wells uh, to when the pressure is off uh, and we get the Spirit of God going uh, and we come into his house uh, that the Spirit of God uh, would once again fill the tanks uh, to where it shook the earth uh, where we're standing. Amen. We need that today in this time in which we're living in. But we've seemed to come become afraid of worshiping God. We've seemed to become scared of letting our outward uh, emotions. Uh, people say, well, it ain't about emotions. Well, I'm telling you, Jesus had emotions. Uh, he wept. He laughed. He cried. Uh, he had emotions. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you something. And I've been told everything, friend. You know, I, I've been called everything, too. But God calls me son. Uh, one fellow after a sermon I preached one day, I mean, I got three sheets in the wind of the Holy Ghost. I mean to tell you, son, I didn't even know where I was. And after the service, uh, I kind of put my tie back and a button my coat. I was standing at the back and this fine, refined gentleman come up to me. He said, sir, preacher, he is, I said, thank you. He said, bless God, Jesus didn't jump, holler, squall, slobber, and spit like you have today and thump and run all over this place. Uh, I said, sir, you're exactly right. Uh, I said, but everybody he touched did. Uh, oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, we need to get a touch from God again. But in a normal process, here we, I, I, we service the wells, but the wells, once they were dug, there was something that took place next. There was a six-inch pipe. We called it casing. You took the six-inch pipe, six inches round, the rig, it was 20 foot long, the rig would pull the pipe in the air, 
We would put it into the hole and it would drop down into the hole. There were stops that stopped it at the collar and then we would unhook those, pick up another one and put it on top, screw it into there real good and tight. The uh, two of us uh, using pipe wrenches to, to tighten that up to make the work faster and then drop it down to the depth of wherever the well had been dug. Well, preacher, what was the casing for? Well, here was what it was for. Once the well had been dug, they put the casing in the well to do this, to keep the things from the earth falling into the well and clogging it up. Dear Lord, you didn't hear what I said. I said they put the casing in the well. It sealed away the earth and the particles and the things that would fall in the well and clog it up. Friend, I don't know about you, but I'm glad tonight when I got born again, I got sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. And can I tell you, if you will allow the Holy Ghost, he'll keep the things of the world out of your life. Amen. It was work. It was backbreaking work. But boy, we had to get that. It would, do not, it would not produce anything until it was down all the way to the bottom of the well. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. We've got too many people coming to an altar having an emotional experience and the problem is they're not getting down all the way to the bottom and the rock where it's at. You don't have to shout me down. I'm used to not hearing shouting anymore, but I'm preaching a lot better than you're shouting. Amen. Bless God. That's the problem today. I'm going to tell you something. You ain't going to tell me or ever convince me or prove me that you come to an altar and God forgive you of all your sins, everything in your past, and you leave this building and never come back. Oh, buddy, I want to look up here. I ain't hard to find. It ain't time to pray. Look up here. I'm telling you, they never got what I've got. Thank all two of you. Amen. Amen. But the sealing away of the things of the earth. I tell you the reason we ain't got much power as a church anymore. We're letting things of the world come into the church. Amen. Amen. I know where I'm at. I know who I'm preaching to. Bless God. I'm just going to tell you something. I'll tell you this. There's been a whole lot changed in 30 years since I walked on them campgrounds over in Kentucky. But bless God, I'm just going to tell you something. I know one thing that hasn't changed, and that's the God I serve and what he does and how he does it. Say amen right there. I say bless God. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end and the ways thereof are death. I had one of my parishioners this week on Sunday, on Sunday morning. He come into my office. He said, Pastor, I need to talk with you if you don't care. I said, that'll be fine. He sat down. Now, generally, if there's going to be a problem or, you know, something they're needing, and I'm fine with that. But on this occasion, he said, I've been thinking about something. I said, well, I said, what have you been thinking about? He said, well, you know, I know, and, and he, a member of our church, he said, I, you preach the truth. And he said, you don't sugarcoat it. You just say it like it is. And he says, you know, there's hundreds of people watching you every service out there. And he said, you preach some things that I know a lot of them don't probably like. And he said, I'm a little nervous, he said, because I'll just tell you, there's people out there that's crazy that'll come in here and do crazy things. So he said, would you have a problem if I sat by the back door and make sure when the service starts that nobody, I'll let anybody in that's peaceable, but make sure nobody comes in here to cause us harm. I said, I'd be happy. I said, I even may preach stronger if I see you sitting back there. Somebody said, why, you don't have to do that. You shouldn't do that. Listen, they just went in a church in Nashville, a school, and killed, what, three teachers and three little kids. What kind of warped mind can anybody have that would shoot and kill a child? Sad days we're living in. Sad days we're living in. We better get some more pipe drove down in the ground and seal these things away. 
Because, friend, there's no respect for God. There's no respect for the house of God. There's no respect anymore from the people of God, the man of God, because the world don't care. And our country is turning away from God in such a fast pace. In another 10 years, if the Lord doesn't come back, there'll be very few places that'll probably even let me preach. But that's all right. I'll preach anyway. We dug that well. We put in the casing. Then there was another process that took place. It was called tubing. Most of it was two inch, sometimes two and a half. But most of it two inch tubing. It was another 20 foot piece of pipe. And it was run in the ground the same way. But before you put the first joint in, there was what was called a barrel. It was made of brass. It was four foot long. And it screwed on that first joint of pipe. And then you ran the same amount of tubing, less maybe a foot, than you did of the casing. And what would take place is you would put, do the same thing, put the tubing together, run it down, because it had its own personal job to do. Anybody glad that you have a personal relationship Amen. with God? Yes. Amen. Hey, listen, I love for folks to pray for me. I, 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 and there, I promise you, there's prayer warriors that pray for us on a daily basis. All during the day, different ones pray for us at different times. And I'm thankful for that. But I'm glad when I really need something, I don't have to call Preacher David. I don't have to call Levi or Greg. I don't have to call nobody. I can get on my knees and I can call on Jesus and know that he hears my prayer. And not only does he hear my prayer, he answers my prayers. Now, I'll tell you, he don't always answer them the way I pray them. But he always answers them in the way that's best for our lives. And sometimes he says, okay. Sometimes he says, wait a little while. And sometimes, let's be honest, he just says no. We don't do good with no, do we? I mean, a baby don't do good with no. You ladies buy them coffee tables, put them whatnots on them, and then expect them babies to stay away from them. I say, bless God, what are you doing? If you're a baby, you're going to go out there and get them things. No, 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 no. Well, you want to put them there, amen. Same way, you don't have to tell, you can tell a young, you can, and you can, matter of fact, you can tell adults now, uh, bless God, you can tell a young, don't touch that stove, it's hot. You know what they'll do? Inevitably before it's over, they'll touch it. It don't take them long to turn loose of it. Can I tell you there's a lot of things in the world that's hot and wrong? We don't need to touch them. Amen. Oh, I, I, I know somebody ain't like me right now, but that's all right. I, I can tell you this. Uh, I'm telling you, we need to have that tubing. That tubing was run down in there uh, for it was going to uh, have a, something inside of it uh, that was going to bring something up out of it to the top of the surface. Can I tell you something? Bless God, we need to allow God uh, to drill a well inside of our souls uh, and allow the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. Uh, uh, that he can bring something up out of our lives. Uh, let me tell you something, friend. Uh, uh, people have got the things mixed around. Uh, I hear people say this. Well, I'm going to go to church tonight. Uh, and if the Lord comes on me, comes on you. Where, that, you know what that is? That's Old Testament preaching. They did not have the Spirit in them. We, the, the Spirit ain't going to come on you. It's going to come out of you if it gets here. Why? Because he said, I've come to dwell in you and your heart. We need to not have to come to the house of God. And, well, well, here's the way we are. Well, if they sing my favorite song. Well, if they've got the sound just perfect. Well, if they've got the temperature just right. I might raise my hand and wave it a little for Jesus. Uh, can I tell you where's happened to all the shouters? Uh, where's happened to all the worshipers? Uh, I'll tell you what our problem is today. Uh, God spoiled us. Uh, we don't even think we need him a lot of times. Uh, but can I tell
tell you, them old soldiers, uh, they knew what it was like to make it through a week. Uh, they knew what it was like to get on their knees uh, and pray groceries in the house uh, and healing on their family. And that's why they come to church uh, and wasn't ashamed uh, to lift up their hands uh, and wave their Bible and shake their hankies uh, and say, thank God uh, he's brought me through again. Somebody give him praise in the house of the Lord. Glory to God. That's what the tubing done. The Holy Ghost. It needs to dwell in us. Now listen. Again, I know where I'm at. Let's get this thing right. When I got saved, I got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you, and I'll agree with you, that there's been many times, countless times, is the only way I can say it, that I have been filled or baptized, whatever you want to call it. Baptism just means to be covered, a man buried in it, saturated. I'm, tell you, I'm about there right now. I can tell you something, friend. What we need is not another pamphlet. What we need is not another program. What we need is some old-fashioned Holy Ghost uh, anointed preaching uh, and singing under the unction to where people will run to the house of God. Yes, Jesus. But most times we just act like we're trying to make it through. Preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. Get in line. Get in line. Everybody's going through it. You ain't the only elephant in it. Bless God, we're all going through things. We'll always be going through things. But can I tell you, I'm going to a place one day where the devil will have no entrance. He'll not be there. I won't have to worry about it anymore. And bless God, I'll be home at last. So we'd run that tubing in there. The case off. We'd case off down so far. They'd put an apparatus. And when it, when it got down to the point, they knew exactly because of the core drilling maps, they knew exactly where to do it. And that, that apparatus that was on that tubing, at one, at they got to the point, they would pull it up about two foot and let that thing, just let that uh, uh, cable free fall for about two foot and then stop it on a break just like that. And what would happen, there was things in that apparatus that spread out into the casing that kept anything from under there getting up and bless God forever. Can I tell you something? There's a few of us. Uh, it'd be good if the Lord and the Holy Ghost dropped us about two foot uh, and stopped us real quick uh, in our tracks and say, Hey, listen, how come you to think things are different? now. It's the same thing. Amen. While well, we've sung, oh how I love Jesus till the church mice knows the tune. They can play it, probably have church when we ain't even here. But bless God, we need to get back to the power of God. That's what's going to help our country. That's what's going to help your county. That's what's going to help your city. That's what's going to help your community. I promise you the Democrats and the Republicans ain't going to do it. Or oh, the independents. But bless God, if anything changes our communities and our areas, it's going to be the church. We need to redig some wells. What is it? The pandemic has stopped up a lot of wells. They can't go, they don't go to church no more. I can't say they can't go. They could go as they go to Walmart and everywhere else. But the only place I told I sent a letter to the president, the only place you can get COVID now, sir, is at church. Because everybody goes everywhere else. Oh, I can go over to church. I'll get the COVID. Bless God. Something's going to take you out of here. Might as well as be COVID. Now, I ain't saying big, ignorant, and foolish, bless God. If you got it, stay at the house. But I ain't going to live in fear. Amen. I've been delivered from that. Then there was another process. The barrel and the tubing has been set. The packer has been dislodged. It's been, or it's been discharged. It's now sealed off. So what happens next is... There was what was called rods. Guess how long they were? You guessed it, 20 foot. 
same length as the joints of tubing and casing. Those rods were about half inch, maybe sometimes three quarter solid steel. And on each end they had a threaded place on them which was about, uh, then a, about an inch square, three inch square up to the rod. And you, what you done on the, on the bottom of the first rod, there was a thing that had cups on it. What that was, was about five, like carbon fiber, little cups that fit on this tube. And the cups were the exact diameter of the inside of the tubing. And you would run those rods all the way down and you would feel when the packing hit the barrel. And then you would drop the barrel about three feet or drop the packings into the barrel about three feet, leave another foot. And what would happen then, the well had been fixed to now there had to be a way and the rods and those cups are going to pump out the oil. And they hooked them to what we call a horse or a pony. You've seen them in the fields. Those things going up and down, those pumps going up and down, we called them ponies. Looks like a bridle on the horse that, you know what it's doing? It's pulling them rods up and pulling them cups up. And what it's doing is, it's forcing by pressure the oil and the water to come to the top. Everything else has been sealed off. Not only has the well been dug, not only have we been saved, but there should come a point in your life that we crawl closer to sanctification. Now, listen, I don't know how you're going to get there. I believe it's a daily walk with Christ. And I believe daily God is sanctifying us if we will allow him to. So that, what would happen is then that would bring up the oil, but there was still water mixed with the oil. And when it come to the top, there was pipe, one inch pipe, that connected to the top of the barrel. And then after it came into that pipe, out about a foot, there was what was called a separator. You know what it done? It separated the oil from the water. The oil went into the tank and the water years ago went into the creek. <laughs> Salt water. Then they made us build ponds. They called them silk ponds. Because the salt water was for no use. But the oil was precious. So all the Holy Spirit is trying to do in us. He's those cups that brings the pressure in our lives and brings things to the surface. And he's the separator of the good and the not so good. And let's just be honest. I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with that. Sometimes I have to have my well serviced. Because after so much time, you know what would happen? Now more often than not, every now and then a rod would break. The pumper would go by. they check the wells every day. And they could tell immediately there was a pressure gauge. And if the pump, if the rod had broke, it was pumping no oil and there was low pressure. We'd go in, we'd pull the rods to that. They had a catcher. You'd go down and catch the other rods, bring them back up. You did not repair that rod. You threw it away and replaced that rod. There's some things in our lives, friends, we need to throw away. Right. Amen. <laughs> Do I get to come back tomorrow night? Is that all right? <laughs> what I'm saying is, and then on occasions, you know, those cups would wear. And you'd have to go in and pull all the rods out and recup and send it back down into the barrel. Now on rare occasions, 
there would come a hole in a barrel. And if that happened, there would be no pressure brought up and you'd have to pull all of it up. You'd have to pull the tubing all and sometimes holes would get in the tubing because of the pressure of things running through it. It would rust out over years and years and years and it would have to be replaced. And on great occasions, there's been wells that were there. When I worked there, they had been there 50 years. And the casing had been there the same amount of time. But every now and then, even a hole would get in the casing. And the things of the world or the earth would have a way in. You know what we'd have to do? We'd have to go in and do a whole service job. Took days. Couldn't do it all in one day. But you always replaced. So there's some things in our lives we need to let God take out and replace them with the godly things that he wants in our lives. Now, I don't know what God's doing in your life. I don't know what you're allowing God to do in your life. But I do know God wants to do something yes. in your life. Amen. Somebody just may need a service job, just may need to come. That's what revival's for. Revival's for God's people. You can't revive something that ain't never been vibed. But if you'll come, he'll, he'll do a service job. And it'll take him all day. He can do it quickly. Amen. Some of you may not even be saved. You may be lost. You need to allow him to dig the well in your life. He can. He will. If you allow him to. Some of you may have personal needs. Physical needs. Spiritual needs. Financial needs. Can I tell you. That the things of the world. Is worthless. But the oil was precious. It was sold and still sold for great prices. Matter of fact, the world fights more over oil than they do silver, gold, or anything else. The control of oil. And here's what it is. Come on, get a song. Here's what it is. We have an endless supply of heavenly oil Amen. from the God in heaven. Yes, yes. And if you're his child, listen. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. If this don't help you, I don't guess I can help you. If you're his child, you have access to that oil. Yes, but you've got to come and get it. You've got to come and get it. You remember when you first got saved? It just gushed out. You know, you didn't, I mean, you, they didn't have to be no plow and they didn't have to be no plug and they didn't have to be, you know, prod. And I mean, the oil just come out. You couldn't wait to get to church. The guys would have went to the women's auxiliary meeting if they'd have let them and the women would have went to the men's meeting if they'd have let them. That's how, that's how it gushed out of you. But see, things of the world... The Philistines of this world will stop up your well if you're not careful. It's not that there's no oil there. Lord have mercy. Did you hear what I just said? I ain't saying there ain't no oil there. <laughs> the problem is, is it getting to the surface? Heavenly Father, I'm not asking for a show of hands tonight. Lord, you know every heart here. It's not important that I know, but God, you know every heart here. You know those that are right with you. You know those who are not right with you. You know those who are away from you. I pray, God, that you would visit their hearts with the Holy Ghost and pump in them and out of them the goodness of heaven and give them joy and peace in their lives and we'll give you praise and glory and honor forever for we ask it in Jesus name Amen while we stand they're going to sing 
you need to come, I'll invite you to come. Are you there? spoke to your heart tonight he loves you he cares for you again this. I want to ask you to bow your heads just for a moment. Just one question. If you're here tonight and you're not saved and you'd like for us to pray for you, I'm not coming where you are. I wouldn't embarrass you for nothing. But I want to see if you're concerned enough about your eternity if you're not saved that you'd like for us to pray for you. All you got to do is this. Slip up your hand. Take it right back down. Don't say a word. Just slip it up. Say, Preacher Mike, I'm not saved. Would you pray for me? Is there one anywhere who would do that? It's not asking much. It's not asking much. Anybody? Sir? Ma'am? Young man, young lady? Anyone? Everybody look this way. They're going to sing one more verse. I love doing this. If you're saved and know it, raise your right hand. If you're happy about it, raise your left hand and say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done for us. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for putting a well inside of me. He'll do it for you if you can, if you'll come. Would you come? Would you come? How about it? I believe God's touched your heart. Would you come? Listen. It doesn't matter what you've done. He'll forgive you. Clean you up. There is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Would you come? How about it? Would you come? I need to ask this real quick. Uh, someone, someone gave a praise earlier in the service. I, I was sitting up here on the front. I didn't see who that was or know who that was. Uh, but they, they 
had a praise that they got a test or scam back, then there was clear who. God bless you. We want to rejoice with you, man. Amen. Sister, we, we want to rejoice with you. Praise the Lord. I wanted to see who it was. I wanted to see who it was. Why would you why would you point her out like that? Well, I didn't point her out. She testified herself. I just wanted to see who she was. But you know what? Come to think of it. Come to think of it. Uh, if he done it for her, you know what? He can do it for you. I'm sure you're saved, right? You know what? If he saved her, he'll save you. I've had people say, me, I preacher, he won't save me. I don't dog dare you to come and try. He will. He will. I, I don't know why, but I feel led to do one more verse. And I, you, these, these folks here know me. I don't normally do this. But I want, when I go to bed tonight, I want to know that I'm cleared of your blood. I want to give you another opportunity. Now let me go ahead and tell you something. I ain't no rocket scientist. Matter of fact, I ain't very smart at all in things of the world. But when it comes to God... I've been walking with him for 51 years. And I know, I didn't have to ask you to raise your hand or not to know if you're saved or lost. I can look in your face. And your face will tell me. Your body movement will tell me if you're right with God. So I'm not picking on you. I know who you are. Because the Lord's told me. But I'm begging you, when the Holy Ghost is this real and this, this peacefulness. See, I preach sometimes and it's chandelier swinging preaching. But tonight God settled me in and he's plowed some folks' corn and he's touched your heart. Now you may never come, you may never get saved, but it won't be my fault. Because I'm begging you right now to do the best thing you'll ever do in your life. Is get out of your seat and come. One more verse. No one comes, I'm through. Have you been wounded? Come on. Are you back Come on. You know who you are. You know I know. Would you come? Would you come? How about it? Would you? You want to go to heaven? You got to come. I'm glad you're here tonight. Boy, you're close. Hey, you're close. But that ain't close enough. Come on. There's three more lines. You coming? I certainly appreciate you being here tonight. Thank God for your presence. Hope you can come back tomorrow night and be with us. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Let me let me just say this before Brother David comes. Are we offline yet? We are? Okay. Uh, we, we've...